rage. Okay. No, no, no. So the least, the the lazier I'm doing it is, I'm going to hit space bar and use preview to show you some images, and that would be <laughs> the way I'm going to give the talk. All right. So um, the the title for this talk is how to make res responsive vertical rhythm with CSS variables and CSS calc. So there are three big words over there. Um, the first big word is vertical rhythm. So what is vertical rhythm in the first place, right? Can you see the the the, the picture properly because it might be a little bit too small. Okay, never mind. This should make it big enough. Yes, big enough. Okay, basically when we um, start thinking about typography, there's this one thing that, um, that we are quite particular with and we call it vertical rhythm. What it basically means is the vertical white space needs to go at a consistent rhythm so we read words easily. So in this case, for example, the words, uh, the, the, the underline is what we call the baseline of a uh, text. Um, and usually in print typography or print magazines, however you put it, we put the baseline at the base of the text, like in this case, and then we just make sure everything lies on the baseline. So it makes the reading part easier. But on the web, um, baseline calculation is kind of a little bit of a challenge. I won't go into details here, but we have it this way. What this means is we have a text, and then we have a line height, and the baseline is just like, well, top and bottom of the thing. But similarly, the, the idea of a rhythm exists. So each line has a specific rhythm in itself. And if you put a space kind of like with the rhythm, it makes, it makes it easier to read as you go along. All right. So the idea of vertical rhythm is using this line height as the common spacing variable for your entire design. So in this case, it will be um, 24 pixels. I can use it everywhere else, make it like uh, 0 0.75, uh, half a multiple, or two times a multiple, and use that value as the space. So in that case, we are not calculating by, can you shift it by two pixels, that kind, that kind of calculations. We don't really care anymore because everything is relative then. All right? So that's what vertical rhythm is all about. Now, um, um, like I was saying earlier, if you need more spaces, you can see I did a three times over there. So 24 times three is 72, and then you can use that as a space variable. So we don't have to worry about minute pixel changes. In the code way of doing it, it's kind of like that. If we write in pixels, say if font size is um, 20, 20 pixels and line height is 1.4, then the vertical rhythm is 20 times 1.4 or 28 pixels. And we just use that value 28 throughout with some multiples to the 28, depending on how you want it to. Likewise, continuing on the code side of things, if you know this value called rem, rem, uh, is a CSS unit that says the it equals to the base font size. The base font size is the font size mentioned in the HTML. So whatever the font size in the HTML, that is one rem. If the line height of the body text is 1.4, then we use one rem times 1.4. So the calculation goes, if you want one VR or one vertical one or one rhythm unit, that is 1.4 rem. So that's how the the thing goes. Then we come in, then, then there's this thing about, um, about typography where, you know, like when it comes to responsive design, you want to increase font size as the screen gets bigger because we are usually further away from the screen. And in typography, there's this thing called the typography triangle where there's a delicate balance between three things. So the length of the text, if it's too long, it's hard to read. If it's too short, it's also hard to read. And the font size itself, and also the line height of the text. So generally speaking, um, if the text is at a readable size, you kind of want to increase the font size as you increase the text size. Um, because the same amount of multiple, at, the, at a larger size, you, you need more space to have more breathing room for the text. 
So Tim Brown, which is one of the typography experts, came out with this thing known as a molten leading. And this is how he kind of coined it. Um, basically, what this means is using CSS Calc, which does calculations. And he does it with 1EM plus 1VW. VW um, is the viewport width, so it changes the font size. But at the same time, you also change the line height with, like, say, 1.2M plus 1VW, and kind of that's the thing, right? Um, in practice, it looks like this. I have to open this up. Okay, so if we reduce the font size, you can see the line height reducing, but at a slightly faster rate than the font size itself. So that's how when you well, I don't really like molten lighting because you know you can't really control it properly. See, where it gets to a point where the the lighting is a little bit too big, or red lighting meaning the line height. So if you want to control that, right, and still uh, if you want to control that, you have to use media queries for your line height, right? Then we come back to the problem of. Um, vertical rhythm, because if you change the line height of the vertical rhythm on the HTML, you have to change the line, the, the rhythm unit everywhere else based on our calculation. So what that means okay, is kind of something like this. You change the, mm, too small. Where is my mouse? Okay, so you change the line height, and then add a different uh, certain pixels, you change, line, you change the line height, and then you have to do all the calculations for all the margin and all the other stuff that you, are, you had done before. Uh, and so far, before CSS variables and before calc, um, we didn't have a way to do responsive algorithm because this is freaking painful. All right? Um, next. Where am I? So with CSS variables, there is an easier way of doing this whole vertical rhythm thing. But first of all, what is CSS variables? CSS variables is it's kind of like normal variables, but written in a, CS, uh, in, in a custom property way. So they are also called custom property. What you do is to define the CSS variable first with this double dash syntax that says, OK, color is something I want to, I want to define. And this time, it's, I say it's red. And the good thing about CSS variable is that you can calculate it at runtime, meaning at 30 EM, I can change this to blue, and then I can write color var, uh, var color, which is my CSS property. And at 30 EM, it will automatically change to blue. So that's what CSS variable does. All right. Then if we think about this in the same way, we can use CSS variables to create a line height, right? So let's say a line height is 1.4. We can use this value from 1.4. And just to make it drastic, um, just to make it visible, we can change it to 3. It's like two times the line height. It's like huge change. But in the CSS um, way of, but when we calculate the whole uh, thing, we just need to say margin top. We have to use calc because we want to multiply with a multiple. So if it's one rem, you can say var baseline times one rem. Right? So this is two rhythm units cost two rems. 0 0.75 will be 0 0.75 rhythm units, and so on. And what we have as a demo then is this. So I think, yeah. So at a certain point, I changed only the line height variable. I didn't change the font size in this example. But I changed the line height variable. And just changing that line height variable changes the margins and the line height of the body element as well. So that is how you can do um, CSS, a responsive vertical rhythm in CSS. Yeah, this is the line height. Oh, wait, I didn't do the calculation here. No, shit, damn it. This is how ill prepared I am. OK, so um, calc, and then for for example. Mm. 
So 800 pixels I changed. Uh, right now that's a very big margin, so it's, so it's quite obvious. At 800 pixels you see that change in margin, even though I didn't change the margin value uh, in a media query in this H1 declaration. So um, that's what I want to share. You can, you can uh, use this in production if, if and only if, if um, you don't have to support browsers that don't use uh, CSS variables. <laughs> yeah, if, if you don't have to support that. What's the at the moment? Sorry? That's not IE basically, is it? IE can, I think IE is possible as well. It's just the older browsers. Um, yeah, Opera Mini. That's the only concern. Opera Mini. <laughs> I11, I don't support I11, I don't care. <laughs> well, even Opera Mini is viewport, you could just assume they are a viewport and have a callback. Yeah, but the thing about CSS variables is you can't have a CSS variable fall back easily. Yeah. That's, the, that's the unfortunate thing. If you use CSS variable as a calculation, you kind of have to do that twice. Um, so I, I, I have an article. I didn't talk about the... Uh, just let me bring up the article. I think I have some code. Uh, yes. I think I have some code samples for the fallback, so I'm just going to refer to it. Yeah, so um, so basically, oh yeah, I, I, I went into a little bit more in-depth in, in this article because I kind of made a SAS function to do the count baseline kind of thing so you don't have to do it yourself and you can use it like, say, margin top RVR2 or something like that, where, where RVR means responsive vertical rhythm. But if you talk about support, then you want to write um, the unsupported variable, uh, the, sup the base support first, which is you have to do the calculations yourself. And then you have to, it's like a double property kind of thing. It's not very nice, but if you want to, you can write it. Uh, and just because margins and paddings and values are used so much, it, it just kind of becomes unwieldy if you want to support this. So yeah, Opera Mini is my main concern about using this method in real production. Uh, what, what do you think the chances are that a person would definitely use the Opera Mini to assess Oh, it really depends on the... Like, we, we won't use Opera Mini, but Opera Mini is, is mostly used by people who don't have like good equipment and good Wi-Fi like us, you know, people in Africa and Nigeria probably. Australia. Australia? Uh, Australia, yes, as well. So um, areas with no, with bad network, they usually have cheaper phones. And Opera Mini is a browser that caters to that. Um, so there are a lot of people who use Opera Mini. Um, the feature queries help with all of this sort of stuff. Sorry? Do feature queries help at all with like use of calc and val? Because I've not looked into that. So I don't understand your question. Feature queries? Feature queries. Yeah, so like media queries, but feature where you check if like a certain like, mm -hmm. oh, CSS yeah. Rules, yeah. Like, so you, You're still writing, if you're using, um, you're still snipping, but you're still having to write everything twice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess if you like have something bad bones that kind of yeah. well, makes it breathable. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, if, again, if it's only Opera Mini, you can assume small screens because I that's what Opera Mini does. Hey, actually, it happens. You know, feature queries are usable, oh. but in Opera Mini, this this is something new. I didn't know it previously. Hmm. So, have you used this technique for anything where I eleven doesn't work? Like these features. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That works. Um, well, but even so, we can't use this technique with Opera Mini because it's too yeah. unwieldy at this point. Uh, it's just because of how the syntax for CSS variable needs to be. Yeah. Un it's unfortunate. You can get knowledge <laughs> You're going to get a box. <laughs> get the whole box. Go. So how do you work around this right now? Are you using like, like less or like SAS? Like well, even if you use less or SAS, you can't really use it. But, yeah. but generating lots of 
it might be possible if you do post CSS. Yeah. It might be possible if you do post CSS. Uh, but I haven't had the, the time and chance to dig into post CSS and make know something that does that <laughs> automatically. <laughs> If, if I find some time, I, it, this is probably the first thing I'm going to do because I'm like a typography kind of nerd thing nerd guy. I think we're awfully close to getting there. Uh, it's, it's just going to take one good example of what to do and we'll be using CSS variables. Yeah. Um, but we're awfully close. I mean, it's, it's pretty near. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not as I mean, unfortunately, it's not as useful as something like Grid, where there were fallbacks. Mm. This yeah. is no fallback. We also we also can't use Calc in Opera Mini as well. So oh. there's like two things to wait for. Um, I have no idea when Opera Mini will catch up. My my hope yeah. is they will catch up before I make the the plugin or. If I ever make the, that, that post CSS thing, I, I will hope that Opera Mini never catches up because it will be a waste of my asset. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a battle between those two um, thoughts. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Thank you, Zell. Thank you.